Celtics Talk podcast is presented by 24autogroup.com. You'll save more at Route 24. What's up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of the Celtics Talk podcast here on the NBC Sports Boston Podcast Network. Got a fun one for you today. Uh, we're going to hone in. Last time we were we were focused on uh, Sam Hauser. It's going to be a little bit more Sam Hauser content on this episode. We got Tony Bennett, head coach of the University of Virginia. Uh, not only did he coach uh, Sam Hauser there, but coach Malcolm Brogdon. So uh, with a rare chance here, the, the, the real only two new additions to the Celtics rotation coming off last year's championship squad sort of feels like it's going to be uh, Malcolm and, and Sam. And maybe some of the bigs will get you know additional time. But uh, I wanted to catch up with, with Tony and find out what he thought about some of his guys joining a championship caliber rotation and, and how they might be able to help this team. And then later in this episode, we're going to sit down with Malcolm, our media day interview, kind of talking about his summer travels, like how his role is uh, is going to be for what is what he envisions for his role on this team. Uh, and like I said, I think you're going to you're going to be excited. He has said all the right things in the ramp up here uh, to the actual season and embracing a sixth man role. It's uh, it, 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 if everyone embraces their opportunities here, there's a real chance for the Celtics to sort of build off of the momentum from last season. You know, Tony was asking me before we, we hopped on and saying, like, how has it been? You know, has, he's only been able to catch a little glimpses of, of these preseason games. And I'm like, you know, what's ironic is that one of the first times that Malcolm thrived in the preseason was Sam was out there and creating opportunities for Hauser to hit three-pointer. So maybe there's something in that UVA connection, uh, even though they didn't play together there. Maybe they uh, they all uh, feed off that, that Cavalier energy. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Here's my conversation with Tony Bennett. All right, Tony. I, I want to start here. What's it like when you, this this summer and you hear you, you already had Sam Hauser in the system, but then adding Malcolm Brogdon? What's it like to have two UVA guys on the Boston Celtics? Well, I love it. Um, you know, I we've got a guy in our staff who's from Boston, and so he's excited. Uh, I've known Brad Stevens for quite a while. You know, just through our coaching um, paths, and have the utmost respect for you know him, the Celtics program, and then to have um, two guys, two guys that were a blast to coach, uh, be part of that team. And, you know, obviously Malcolm's was a bit of a surprise. You know, I knew Sam, if he got a chance, would, I think, impress because he he knows how to play the game. He's a high IQ player with a gift to shoot the basketball. And just the way the Celtics play, I thought, boy, that'd be good. And then when, when the Celtics, or when I got the news about Malcolm, I thought that's that's a strong get for them and a great fit. And yeah, anytime our UVA players can play in the same team, I love it. Saves me some time so I can either <laughs> look at box scores or watch games and not have to watch five different games. Tell me what you're, as you're, as you're processing it, you know, we were talking before we jumped on here and we said, you know, you're asking how does he fit in? And Malcolm, I think it, it, it took like a little bit. It's, it's weird. He's going from sort of being one of the focal points of his other teams to now being, you know, sort of a, what could be a six man. How do you think he'll embrace that? And how do you think, the, you know, knowing what you know about his personality, how he'll be able to, uh, to to make the most of this situation in Boston. Yeah, I think Malcolm, he just, he wins. He's, you know, both Sam and Malcolm, but specifically Malcolm, they know how to play the game. They they think the game well. They're um, they're really good. And, and Malcolm in particular, you go back to his Milwaukee Bucks, you know, being the rookie of the year when a lot of people, I think that's one of the few guys to win that award, um, not being a top draft mm-hmm. pick. And he just... He played with superstars and he just finds ways. I would never count him out. He he will do what's required. And he's been in the league long enough uh, to know he's so complete. He's so strong driving the basketball. He's really improved his ability to play the point guard, pass off the pick and roll, knock down shots. And then defensively, he's versatile. So I, I don't have any question, whatever role you put him in, he's going to find ways to enhance the team and win at a high level and you'll have a hard time keeping them off the floor in my opinion but Mm -hmm. you need depth uh with the duration of the season and you need quality players and he's uh he's shown that in different roles he's been successful in any role when it was a first year for us playing early you watch him early in his career with the south uh, with the bucks and you see him adapt with superstars then he goes to uh indiana and, and does some good things too what don't we? What will we see about his personality? I mean, he's so he's so poised and so collected and yeah. and so cerebral. Like, what what will stand out as Celtics fans watch Malcolm on the court this year? Yeah, well, you know the saying, "Still waters run deep." I mean, he's a fierce competitor. He's so 
driven and you know he's he's uh in the right way he has a a humility about him but do not mistake that for a a toughness and a fierce competitor that um he'll want to cut your heart out <laughs> and he wants to he wants to win he wants to figure it out he will not the thing that you know i sold malcolm on way back when recruiting him a lot of things but um don't take a back seat no mm -hmm. back seats you you go against he just wanted chances to go against the best you know he wanted to compete against the carolinas and the dukes and you obviously got I know you got some a Duke guy on your team, but <laughs> that's what drove him. And now that he's tasted that and he's been successful, that still hasn't changed. He's very competitive and he will not back down. And um, he loves that. When you see him matching up on LeBron's or different guys, takes great pride in getting a stop, being tough minded. And I think this will um, re reinvigorate him. And I think you're going to see him just fill in the right pieces and then at times be able to take over games in his way, but just, just do what's required to win. And that's what I think Celtics fans appreciate over the years and will appreciate in him. What, uh, what's your favorite Malcolm Brogdon memory from, from UVA? Yeah. I mean, there's so many. Um, I, I just, I, I can go back, but I remember in his first year, we were playing Michigan in the ACC big 10 challenge and he hadn't really played a lot and it was just, you know, there's always those moments in games. It was that game where he comes in and he bangs like three threes, three or four threes. He got big stops and you just realize we got something special here. No one really knew about it. He was not a, I don't know if he was a three star. He didn't have a ton of people recruiting him three or four star, but he just, the bigger the moment because of his calmness and his poise, he's unaffected by what's going on around him. And that was the first time as a freshman in that setting. And we said, man, we got something. And just that moment. There, there's so many along the way, our first ACC championship, regular season and conference tournament championship. You know, he was such a catalyst in that. And that guy, I've seen him take games over with his defense. You know, it's a little harder at the NBA level, but the multiple position defender and he plays position. And I don't, I think people undervalue his, his strength and his athleticism, but your question about the memory, that Michigan game early on and him um, one more memory. Um yeah sitting on the couch in my office saying, coach, I want to come to Virginia mm -hmm. and play. And he said, you have a green light. <laughs> so he said <laughs> to push me as hard as you want. I want to help a team win a championship in college. And I want to become an NBA player. You played for a limited time as an NBA point guard. He said, whatever it takes. He basically gave him permission, push me. That's my goal. His mom was in the visit. And I remember like he was dead serious. You know, some guys, no, I was like, no, I want to be challenged, pushed and driven so that I can help this program and then go beyond. So those memories and then the off the court memory, what he does for others, what he's doing yeah. with charity in Africa. I mean, that's, that's the whole person. And that's the beautiful thing about Malcolm and Sam and, and those guys, when they, they have a gift on the court and they use their platform and their gift to influence others. And I, and I see that in him, and I'm so thankful for how his mom and his family raised him. And it's just a special, a special thing to behold. Yeah, I, I just can't wait to see how he fits in. I mean, from day one arriving here in Boston, he said, you know, I'm okay with being a sixth man. And it's hard for players to embrace that. But you can tell Malcolm really just eager, eager to win and feel like uh, maybe some of those same vibes that when you got on your on your couch. Now, uh, take me through Sam Hauser. Obviously, transfers in late in his, in his college career. But what, what was that like? And I, I guess you had some family ties with him, right? Yes. Well, I'm from the state of um, Wisconsin and where Sam went to high school is where my sisters went and the, the town Stevens Point, Wisconsin, where I grew up. We tried to recruit Sam very hard out of high school and he ended up staying in the state going to Marquette. But um, no, played with his father uh, in AAU basketball and his uncle and just a good family relationship. Sam is just one of those guys that he just finds a way. Again, he has a gift to shoot the ball, but you talk about a smart player and understands his place and he'll like Malcolm, they're just such good hearted. I mean, I, I don't know if this is the right word to say. I'm doing an NBA podcast with you, but they're kind people. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're they're good men that are kind, but when they play, boy, they'll compete. And I love that about them. And I think that's okay. You know, everybody says, well, you got to be a certain. No, no, no. These are good men that care about people, treat people well. And when they get between the lines, they can compete. And with Sam, you know, I'm a little biased to a Wisconsin upbringing, but he's just <laughs> a good old Midwestern young man, I was going to say, boy. But, uh, and again, he he just figures out ways wherever they've doubted him, like Malcolm, they they cross that, you know, get over that hurdle. Then it's on to the next. And and they usually find ways to make a team better at the highest level. And that's what Sam has done throughout his career. 
So we saw some glimpses last year of the three point shooting and clearly in this preseason, he's really kind of, I mean, I, I keep saying it's like Hauser mania running wild up here. Like people are really excited uh, about what he can bring because they were missing sort of that additional bench shooter that, 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 that they could, that really could use in the finals or whatever. And so, but what, what haven't we seen from Sam that you saw behind the scenes, you know, can he get to it to, to the, the a defensive level where he can be, he can play consistently on that. And what, 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 what needs to, what haven't we seen quite yet on the Boston uh on the Boston yeah court. well we worked at it hard when he was in college and you know <laughs> Sam as I mentioned he's such a smart player and in discussions I've had with Brad Stevens about him he just said you know as he continues to understand there is always an adjustment high school to college of course college to the NBA but um but again he knows angles he's smart he's he's a little he's just deceptive and his whatever he doesn't have maybe pure athleticism wise he makes up for with angles in his mind and that's important. And he thinks quick and he's continuous. And as I mentioned, he has the component of being tough, tough physically and tough minded. And, you know, at that level, I understand you got to stay healthy and all that, but Sam is more than just a shooter. He passes the ball. Well, he sees things. His game is understated. So there's a completeness there. I mean, he's not going to be your point guard, but there's a completeness there with how he'll see things, how he'll pass, how he'll, always be in the right spots. And then defensively, you always have to answer that question, you know, the ability to slide and keep people in front, but always be in the right position as he continues to adjust and improve in that. Um, then you got a guy who's dangerous. You see guys around the league that have huge impacts on the right kind of team. And I think Boston's the right kind of team for Sam's strengths and his liabilities or his deficiencies. He, they're not as big as you think. And mm -hmm. I think he'll, he'll cover those up and surprise people. Do you take any credit for that beautiful looking shot? I, I know his parents <laughs> said even they can't they they can't uh, take it because they said he just picked up the little Nerf ball as a kid and was already had the beautiful perfect arc on the ball. But you know, coaches, I feel like you can you can you can lay some claim. <laughs> well, I joked with him. I think and Malcolm and our crew. I said, "How would you feel playing for a coach who can still out shoot you?" And they both <laughs> said, "No chance." So I can't. No, Sam. You know he right. You know guys that shoot it well, they start at a young age and. Mm -hmm course we work hard on shooting and he did improve his percentage this year but uh some of that is you know just eye hand natural coordination and then you know like Malcolm and him and all the good players they come in and they're so purposeful you talk about being pros or business like even in college they come in whether it's 30 minutes for practice they have their routine they're going to get their shots and they're going to work hard and practice and do it after and they just hone their craft and and, you know, if you have a specialty like that, you get, there's usually a place for you. And he's got good size, too. But, no, I can't take much credit. <laughs> Except just, you know, in my own mind, I do so. But otherwise, not really. Uh, I, I I was reading a story about you and uh, and Brad Stevens, and I heard that you may be slotted ahead of Brad on the ping pong rankings at the uh, <laughs> back Center. Do you know if that if, if you're still on the power rankings? And I have uh, no idea. Mm. I, I was I was told. I remember I came, our team played Boston College, and then we um, I don't know if we got snowed in, so we got to practice at the facility. That was wonderful. But mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if it was Danny Ainge at the time or whoever. There's this imaginary or this board, and I saw it and. <laughs> I think they did it just to tick Brad off. Like I played, I think I played his son and yeah. they're telling me I had an illegal serve, which was all BS, but, uh, but I could play a little bit and I, a little bit. And they said, just to tick off Brad, we're going to slot you above him, see what he does. So that might be a, a good match, but who knows? Uh, and I, and just, okay. So I grew up in, I, I was born in 1980. I grew up with like nineties basketball. Uh, do you have any Charlotte Hornet starter jackets around your house from, from <laughs> your days there? Cause I, I, I still have one in the closet somewhere. You were, we were the, you know, everyone loved the horns, the purple and teal. I, I'll tell yeah. you a story and I'm not going to be well liked from this, but it's, it was just on, like someone texted me and said, watch NBA hardwoods. We played, um, we beat the Celtics mm -hmm. on a last second shot in 93, my rookie year. And, you know, that was the last game that Kevin McHale played and Alonzo morning hit a last second three. I remember I had D Brown blocked out. So yep. I was going to get the tip in, right? No chance, but, <laughs> but I can remember that game and that series, um, a couple things, how being in the garden, a playoff series. And, um, you know, that was actually the game that um, in the first or second game, Reggie Lewis had had collapsed on the floor and then, you know, didn't play the rest of the series. And, and you know, God rest his soul um, later that summer um, is when that happened to him. And then we went on and we won that series, but it was McHale's last game and playing against that. And then I think um, I played with the chief. Um, I think he. Yeah. He came to Charlotte the next year, the following year. So, um, but I remember those memories, but you know, it was a unique time to be a Charlotte Hornet. Sincerely, as you mentioned, it was right. really an upstart team. We were in our seventh or eighth year, sold out every game. 
everybody wanted the purple and teal. <laughs> we had Larry Johnson, Alonzo, Muggsy Bogues. You know, there's some special players, and it was fun. And then, as everything free agency happened, and then the team broke. I said it was because they traded me. You know, who knows what the mm -hmm. reason was, but special time and great colors for sure. And oh my gosh, I, I'm yeah. telling you because the Celtics. I mean, I hate to say it in, in that in that post '93, like you guys sort of ended the Big Three era, right. and it you know there wasn't a lot of excitement around the team at that point, and uh, so yeah, a lot of us gravitated towards the uh, the cool colors as kids, and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm forever. Thoughtful. Did you ever hear the story? Like, so I, I never knew this. You know, we think about how guys have big retirement ceremonies now. I guess Kevin McHale after that game just walked to midcourt and was like, gathered a couple of reporters around and said, "Okay, guys, I'm done." Yes. Unless, I mean, it's just a different world back then. Like, you know, no. it, that one always fascinated me from a from a media <laughs> perspective. What a what a career! What a special <laughs> career, no doubt. Well, Tony, I can't thank you enough. I'm gonna. I hope you don't mind if I check in along the way. We'll see how these UVA guys do up here. But thank you so much for taking some time to tell us about yeah. Sam and Malcolm. I'm excited for their future there, and I really hope they help you guys, and thanks for having me on. Look no further than the award-winning 24 Auto Group. With over 2,600 vehicles in stock, the brands you love, backed by the savings and service you can count on. Visit today or shop online at 24autogroup.com. We're kicking off fall with big savings at Stateline Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. Lease a new Ram 1500 for $369 a month during Ram Power Days. Hurry in and you'll be saying, I got mine at Stateline. All right. I, mean, I Look, I mean, I know, I know college coaches have to say nice things about their players, but man, I, I was fired up sitting there and talking about Malcolm saying he'll do anything to, 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 to be an NBA player and to win a championship. Uh, that's what you want to hear from your, your, from your stars and your, 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 the, the, the players that will hopefully push you over the top. And again, I feel like that's what Malcolm has stressed to the Celtics sitting down with Brad Stevens and uh, now Joe Missoula as head coach, you know, he'll do whatever it takes, even though he's been a superstar in this league and been the focal point in Indiana, a real opportunity here for him to, you know, thrive without as much attention. And we'll see if uh, if he can maximize that. Let's keep talking to Malcolm. Here it is. We sat down with him right before the start of the preseason. Here's our interview with Malcolm Brogdon from Media Day. How was your summer? It's great. It's great. Have what, a great summer. What's the What's the best thing you did? Um, this summer. Um, spending time with my family, with my wife and daughter is. There's nothing that really rivals that. Outside of that, um, I went to Egypt at the end of the summer. It was amazing. Um, it's a bucket list place. I've always always wanted to go to Cairo. Um, so being able to go there and experience that. I need to go back because I only spent four or five days there. I didn't see enough, but I'm going to go back and see it again. So I've heard that, like, and, 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 and people were telling me when you did the uh, NBA Africa stuff, like you just love going to, and doing those things. What's the, what are those experiences like? Uh, they're really amazing. You know, you go there with basketball without borders with the NBA and you're really putting on a clinic for the kids. You're training the kids, really the best talent. They've picked all over the continent. They bring them together. You put them through a camp and you're coaching them for about four or five days. Um, but in that four or five days, they're packed. Your schedule's packed. You're really busy. You can't really see a lot of whatever city you're in. Um, so for me, the experience is great, but you need additional time in the cities to really be able to experience them. What did you get to see in Egypt? What was uh, I got to see the uh, Pyramids of Giza, um, but there's so much outside of that. Abu Simbel, uh, 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 I forgot what the uh, the pharaohs, not the land of the pharaohs, but you, there's so much outside, so many tombs. There are other pyramids outside of Cairo, outside of the city, um, in Alexandria, um, in Luxor. There's there's so much to see in that in that country. Um, that's why you have to go back. You mentioned your family. How is that? Because when you get traded, I mean, people you forget you got to like uproot your life. How's that been? The experience of, of coming to Boston? It's been good. Uh, honestly, it's been great. The people have been really kind. People in the neighborhood, people in the community have really embraced me and my family. Um, the organization's been great working with us, making the transition easy. Um, and then, you know, it's a great city. I haven't been in a big city since, uh, honestly, since being at home, being in, in Atlanta. Um, so being back in a big city has been really nice. What is this, uh, you've been able to do informal workouts with the team here the last couple of weeks. What has it stood out as you get to know your new teammates? Um, these guys are locked in. They know what they want. There's one goal in mind. There's not a lot of, um, 
guys are just focused. Guys are, when the guys are in the gym, there's not a lot of joking. There's not a lot of laughing around. It's, what, it's, it's a lot of what my vibe is. I'm all about business when I step in the gym. Um, I consider myself between the lines as soon as I enter the facility every day. Um, so I, I, I enjoy the vibe of that. It's a very work, worksmanship approach. Um, guys are focused. Can you, in a team coming off an NBA Finals, like, do you feel like, man, I can help them take that next step, help them take that last step to get where they need? To? I do, I do. I, I think I can help them. Um, I think what I bring to the team um, is, is something that the team is missing in some ways, um, but I, I think I can definitely help. You made it a point when you first came in to say, like, okay, I'm going to take whatever role is out there for me. Why was that important to you, and how much do you think that helps? Because sometimes it can like define roles seem so important in this league and, and, and knowing what you're yeah doing. you know it was really important to me because I wanted to send a message to the guys on this team that uh, regardless of what I was doing in Indiana um, I'm willing to sacrifice to win to be a part of what you guys got going it's not about me it's about the team um, so I wanted guys to know that openly and up front that I'm in it for the team even if I play a smaller role here than I did wherever else I was um, and then define roles are the biggest thing in the NBA Guys that find themselves out of the NBA are guys that don't know what they do and who they are in the NBA. The guys that are delusional. You come across them, honestly, on every team. There's a guy or two like that on every team um, that want a bigger role, that want to be the main guy, that want more shots, that want more time, that want this or that. And really, you have to figure out who you are early on in the NBA um, and stick to it. Guys like Al Horford are the prime example of that. He's been an all-star. He's done amazing things. He's been incredibly accomplished and is a big winner in the league. But Al knows who he is. He never gets outside of himself. He never has. Um, so it's, you know, there, there's a way to go about this and to find roles, I think, really help people succeed. How much can your versatility help? And how much do you want to be able to show them, play multiple positions, defend multiple positions, and, and help this team? Especially with, when you think about Gallinari being out to start the year, Rob being out to start the year. Like, how much can you help with the versatility? I think I'll, I think I'll really, really help. Um, you know, I think my versatility will show. I think it will shine. Regardless, um, but I want to, you know, I want to play the game the right way. I'm a guy that enjoys playing good basketball, and here I think they play good basketball. I think they have two great players in Jalen and Jason, um, and they have a good support system and, and cast around them. Um, so I'm I'm here to play good ball to make those guys better and to win. What is what was the perception from the outside? Like, how did you view the Celtics before you got traded here? Playing for the Boston Celtics is a privilege. It, the Celtics, the Lakers, those are the two teams people, especially guys in the NBA, I think people outside the NBA, it's a privilege to put on that jersey. Um, just the banners, the conversation around championships and banners, it's, it's huge. So um, it's a privilege to be able to come here, to play here. Um, and then this team specifically, it's a gritty team that uh, has figured out how to win, um, that have really come together and done this together. And, you know, they, they need a little bit more and, you know, they can do something really special. You mentioned Atlanta. I think I asked you when you first got here, but I want to just follow up a little bit on it. Like go, that whole thing going down there with Jalen and the relationship you guys had down there. What, what does that mean? And you know, what did you learn about Jalen in those experiences? Um, Jalen cares about people. That's that's what I learned, and that's one of the best things you can say about anybody. He cares about people. Um, he cares about his people. He cares about his community. He cares about the city of Atlanta. Um, he's a he's a very loyal guy, which is. Uh, you know, it's those are the qualities that I want to be around every day. Um, and we really bonded over that. We bonded over that experience together and bonded during that time. You've had those informal workouts. Who, who's excited you the most seeing what they've done, whether it's been leaps they made or just someone, wow, I can't wait to play with this guy, see what he can do out there? Uh, I've always wanted to play with Al Horford. He's been like a top two, top three guy I've always wanted to play with in my career. Um, so it's going to be a privilege to play with him. Everything I thought he was, he's that. He's even better. He's easier to play with than what I, what I even thought. Um, I'm excited to play with Grant. Grant's smart. He's tenacious. Um, he's a hard worker, and he's a good player. I still think people haven't seen exactly everything he can do. I think he's, he's a guy that works hard. He talks a lot, but he works hard and plays hard, and I'm, I'm excited to play with him. That's due to the scouting report on Grant. He talks yeah, a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not going to ask you to get into specifics, but just the last two weeks have been obviously a little bit tumultuous. Like, how do, as a player, how, where do you put your focus? How do you help your team get through that situation? You put your focus on your work every day. You, you recommit to getting in the gym the next day and, and working through all this. Literally, you got to work, work, stay focused on what you're doing in between the lines every day. Stay focused on getting to the gym on time. It's just little things, getting to the gym on time. 
uh, you know, making sure you're sharp in every workout every day, making sure you're taking steps forward. That's how you don't get caught up in the distractions. You stay focused on your details. And what have you learned about Joe Mazzulla since you've been here? He is the example of, of you know, only caring about the details, not worried about the big picture, not worried about keeping the head coaching job, not worried about any of that. He's worried about this team winning. He's worried about doing stuff right every single day so that we can add up enough good days to make it a good week, and a good week becomes a good month. A good month, a few good months become a great season. And last thing, so just give me the, again, almost like an outsider perspective, but now that you're here, like what, is Jay, what are Jalen and Jason? Where are they rank in the league in terms of, you know, what they can be or, or what they have done here? They're stars. Um, they're incredibly respected. Um, you know, as far as putting a number on top whatever player, they're incredibly, they're respected as two of the best players in the world. So um, they, they can and should be two of Boston Celtics' greatest players ever. Um, but we got to win a championship. And they got to lead us, and we got to support them, and that's that's what the plan is. And I'm actually going to ask you one more because you're you talking about greatest players, but the, the number six, and, and seeing that number six, they're going to put it in the lane this year, Bill Russell. Like, what well, does that resonate? Again, I know you're you're new to the experience and everything like that, but as a as a guy who's been around basketball, like, what does that mean? And and you know, what is there any added? I don't want to say motivation, but added pressure being in Boston, the banners, the numbers, all those sort of things. Of course, of course, there's added pressure. This is a legendary organization. This is the legendary organization. So there's definitely added pressure, but it's pressure that I welcome, that I thrive well under. Um, so we got to get to work. I just keep repeating it, but Malcolm has said all the right things. And, you know, look, look when they brought him in, I did think there was just a little bit of uh, what I call the, the Schroeder fear, right? Where uh, you bring in Dennis Schroeder and he was a little bit thinking about his own numbers and didn't always embrace the uh, the, the right sort of mindset for, for what he was on this team. Uh, but like, I just feel like Malcolm Brogdon is at a different stage of his career. And if he can truly buy into being just a piece of this puzzle and using his strengths, which accentuate everybody on this team, I mean, the ball handling and the, the ball security from the, the finals and his ability to create for that second unit, which which endured some some dry spells in those postseason and just being a, a, a good presence, someone who's been out there in big games, who knows what it's like to play with superstars from his time in Milwaukee. And so... I think it just could truly be the, the, the final piece of the puzzle for the Boston Celtics. Uh, the final preseason game is coming up Friday night. Uh, everybody get ready. We'll be back with the post-game pod that night. Uh, Going to get you ready for this, this season uh, next week with, a, with our sort of season preview here on Celtics Talk. So everybody go like, subscribe, check us out on the YouTube page. We'll catch you all next time on the Celtics Talk podcast. Kick off ball with game-winning deals at Route 9 Nissan. Lease a new Rogue Sport for $2.89 a month. That's right, just $2.89 a month. Score your game-winning deal now and visit today or online anytime at Route9NissanAuto.com. We're kicking off fall with big savings at Stateline Subaru. Like a new Subaru Crosstrek. Drive home for just $2.99 a month. That's right, only $2.99. Score big savings today. Stateline Subaru, a driver's best friend.